back to getting in a college coach conversation. Uh, we are talking about applying for visual and fine arts program uh, programs. And joining me today is my colleague, Julia Jones, who's a former admissions officer at Brandeis. Hi, Julia. Hey, Beth, how are you? I'm good, thank you. When we were preparing for today's segment, Julia said to me, I'm not really an artist, but I've worked with a number of students applying to art programs. I would just beg to differ. Julia is an unbelievable knitter, and she also creates these amazing Christmas cards every year. So, Julia, with all due respect, I consider you an artist. I, I don't okay. think you should downplay that. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I think a crafter or maker, I, I would probably go with. But yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> I do no crafting. I do no making. In my mind, that's art. So uh, I'm sticking with it. OK, <laughs> back to the task at hand. Um, so I think the first place probably to start are the different college options that are available to students who want to pursue something in the visual and, and or fine arts. So can you talk to us a little bit about the different types of programs that are out there and available to students? Sure, sure. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's usually where I start when I work with a student who may have an interest in doing something in, in visual arts or design um, is to really think about like what's you, what, what experience do you want? You know, there are different types of schools. There are, you know, the art schools, schools that really are kind of what I would call specialty schools. They really focus in on um, on art um, and that's really all they do they do. So, mm -hmm. you know, different and, and they all have different um, elements of art. There are so many different uh, disciplines within that, too. So it's a big umbrella. But, you know, it can include everything from um, fine art or studio art to architecture, um, fashion design, uh, product design and and uh, um, and even some you know graphic design and, and even game design, too. So right. um, so I think so there are definitely schools and schools that you probably have heard of schools like, you know, Rhode Island School of Design or Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, uh, Maryland Inst uh, College Institute of Art. Uh, so there are definitely, you know, art art programs. And for yes. students who are really focused and that's what they want and they want to do and they, they know for sure and that's not going to likely um, change, that could be a great option. Um, and then there are really amazing art uh, majors and programs in art and design at more traditional kind of four, broader four-year institutions, you know, the schools that um, that may offer a great business program or great engineering or arts and sciences, but also do have often a separate school of art and design um, that, that students can do. So it, it gives you a little bit more flexibility if you want to study other things, if you decide midstream that you want to change your major or want to change your mind. So I think there's, there are definitely pros and cons to both to both uh, paths. Right, right, exactly. And I mean, I think of a place like Penn where there was a, a fine arts major, there was an art major that you could do at Penn, but, you know, portfolio wasn't really part of the process necessarily. It wasn't required. And really, you just had to be strong enough to get into Penn. It was less about that versus, you know, an art only school where the only thing you were going to study there was going to be art or even architecture. Again, at Penn, oh. no portfolio, but at a place like Cornell, there's a whole school of architecture and a portfolio is required there. So a lot of different options, as you as you know, and a lot of different ways to study art. It's not just painting and sculpting. Like you said, it's product design, game design, fashion design, right? So many different um, when people think about yeah. art. And I think sometimes when parents think about paying for their student to study art in school, I think what I would love to highlight here is that there are a lot of different ways you can be involved in art and a lot of them pay really good money. Um, you know, yeah. you don't have to be the starving artist in a studio. So, um, well, speaking of portfolios, because this is obviously a big part of applying for this type of major at the schools that require portfolios, what's some advice you can give here to students? Yeah, I mean, I think that I probably the biggest advice is start early. You know, and I think that's that's advice we give for a lot, in a lot yes. of ways and a lot of reasons. But it is it's starting early. Um, you know, your portfolio is meant to be a reflection of who you are as an artist, how you've grown over. And so, you know, it's obviously something that you want to be working on, not necessarily a month before the applications are yes. due. I don't think that's even possible. Um, so, you know, starting early, you know, get advice. You know, when I work with students, um, I'm not a, a trained artist, let's just say. So I'm not I've never put together a portfolio. I don't. And so, um, you know, 
that's not my what I'm helping them with, but I would get to help tell them, you know, you have people in your world that can help you with this. You know, most many students are usually taking art in school. Um, AP art usually is focused on building that portfolio. Um, right. So you know, connect with your teacher. Um, if you have other artists that you've worked with, um, art teachers outside of school, those are great people. They know you as an artist. They can help you, you know, to put together what you put together your portfolio and, and tell you what might be lacking, what, what you might need to do. So, um, right. yeah. Um, and, and so just general, can you walk us through what you see or what you have seen as kind of the general requirements for a portfolio in terms of number of pieces, that kind of thing? Yeah, I, it really does vary from school to school, but I think a general portfolio usually is somewhere between 12 to 15 pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and and they should be kind of reflections of, you know, of who you are as an artist. Um, you know, maybe, you know, what media do you work with? Um, you know, maybe how you've grown. So different pieces th that show the diversity of your style. Um, you know, ideally they should show you as an individual too. So uh, if you're not, you know, they should reflect. I mean, some of them will probably be from um, your art class, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't all be things that you've done in class. I think they should set you apart in some way, kind of in the same way that when we talk about the, you know, the, the written essay for mm -hmm. most applicants. You know, that should be a little piece of who you are as a person and think of your portfolio as a way to really show who you are as an artist. Um, and, you know, it may be that you're really passionate and focused in one or one or two media styles and that's OK. Or it might be that you, you know, you've really experimented. And so um, so there's no right or wrong. It's just really what's going to be your best the things that you're most proud of, but that are also going to give you, um, you know, really show show your growth and development as an artist. Right. And of course, if they're interested, they should be looking at the portfolio requirements on their individual schools of interest because each one might have some unique thing that they specifically want. And to your point, you really can't leave this stuff to the last minute. Um, I wouldn't think. I don't know. I'm not an artist. So I don't think you could sit down, though, at a canvas and bang something out in an evening and say, this is really representative of, of what I'm capable of. No, and, no, yeah. it's not. And I think that, you know, it, it means it doesn't mean that, you know, you can't have some original pieces that you're working on for, you know, for that. But it is, yeah, it's not something you want to be doing, you know, a few weeks before or, or you know, or, or earlier or sooner rather. Um, so, I mean, I think that, and there are definitely some schools that have specific requirements. You know, mm -hmm. there are two colleges that I've worked with students who applied to. I mentioned Rhode Island School of Design, um, Parsons in New York City. They both have kind of almost like an assignment that you mm -hmm. have to do. Um, and they're pretty in depth. Um, you know, Parsons, it's called the Parsons Challenge. And they, they ask for, not, you know, a, 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 a original piece from something uh, from your portfolio, like a corresponding to a theme. And then they want to see the development and then there's writing that goes with mm, it too. They yeah. want you to write about, about the process. Um, RISD has a similar thing where they, um, they have, they give you different words that, and you have to kind of create an original piece and they want to see the prep work, the progress. So um, again, not something even looking at it, I'm like, wow, it's, it's intense. And it's not something I think you could, you know, really do, uh, you know, in just a day, it, it definitely takes some time. And, and actually with that top of mind, what in your mind is probably the most important piece of getting this process right? I mean, I think and it's, it's very similar to what we talk about in general for, you know, for any uh, program that you're applying to organization, crucial, yep. crucial, yep. crucial. I, you know, um, I, one of my students from this past year who's starting at University of Michigan in their design program, you know, she applied to a reasonable number of schools, you know, mm -hmm. by reasonable, I think we had, we, her list was about 10 schools, mm -hmm. evenly balanced, she followed, yep followed my advice and did the right thing. But you know, what was interesting, it really was a lot of work because almost every school, you know, some had, she could use the same portfolio, but some schools had additional writing. They wanted mm -hmm. to know, you know, either an essay or a few short questions about, again, her as an artist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was just a lot of moving pieces and we wouldn't have gotten through it if we didn't really start early, stay organized, stay on track and, um, and really put it all together. But it was a lot of work, so. Yeah, I mean, you're so right when you say we talk about this all the time, and it's really good for everybody who's applying to college, but it is one thing to be, to know that you have to write a main essay and a couple of supplemental essays and have the deadlines to get it in. It's an entirely new thing when you toss all of these other assignments into the mix that can take longer. And 
they also may be things you've never done before, right? So if you're an artist yeah. and you've never written about your process or how you come up with an idea for a piece, maybe you've never thought about how you come up with an idea for a piece. You Maybe it's always an assignment, yeah. right? Or you just sit down and you're like, oh, I'm going to paint that wall, whatever it is. Bad example, yeah. but you know, like I'm going to paint what's on that wall, what I see. If you haven't thought about your process or, you know, how you think through creating your own art that's that's going to stretch yeah a lot of yeah. students right yeah exactly and it's you know it, i mean it's not it's hard but it's definitely as an artist you it's just something you want to think about and and colleges aren't expecting students to be you know fully formed you know artists ready to have their own show i mean some some are but right. i think that, you know they're, they know we're all works in progress so it's yes. trying to out again what they just want to know a little bit more about you right now as an artist where you are who's influenced you what your goals are what you um and and just and how you approach uh you know uh that uh, your, your any project or any piece so right. yeah. exactly exactly so the yeah. last thing i wanted to talk about was um national portfolio day so this is a key this can be really important for students tell us a little bit more about that yeah, it's a grouping. There's, I think, about 100, over 100 schools that are a part of it. It's They do um, uh, events around the country. They do virtual events, too. Um, and it's an opportunity, as I mentioned earlier, get help, you know, have people look at at your portfolio to look at your, um, you know, what you've put together before you submit it. And so it's 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 kind of like a college fair, but for art schools and you can, you know, set up a, a time to talk to. So if you're applying to, um, to RISD, if you're applying to SCAD, if you're applying to Michigan or or Cornell, you can, you know, you can go there and they will take a 15 minute look at the admissions officer who, who works for that program will give you some pointers and tell you, you know, maybe what, you know, what you need to add or what your, how your portfolio looks. So um, right. it can be really, you know, and it's a great way to show your interest and, in, and, you know, I would treat it kind of like a little bit of a mini interview, if you will, but it really has a purpose beyond that, where it really can help you um, to understand what they might be looking for at, in a portfolio and give you some opportunity to, right. uh, to, yeah, to get to improve it. Yeah, right, exactly. And what a brilliant opportunity, because there typically is no opportunity for you to show up at a place where 100 <laughs> schools are there, you could show them your essay and say, Hey, what should I be working on here? Um, so and that's probably a good thing, but that I digress. A, a hundred yeah. different colleges just went, oh my God, the idea of doing that, right? I can't even imagine. <laughs> but the art feels like maybe that would be a little bit easier to to address. Um, so yeah, absolutely something to take yeah. advantage of. I, something else, if you don't see the school you're interested in has a portfolio day, you could request a meeting with someone in the art department. That's something that you could always ask for. And if they have someone available, and you could bring your work and they might be willing to give you a, a quick assessment of it. I you know, can't promise that, but if you're going to be visiting schools, they're open and they're, uh, you know, open to visitors. It could never it, I don't think it will ever yeah. hurt to at least ask the question. Absolutely. Right. And it's again, it's it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're touring. If you were an engineering student, you'd be touring the engineering facility. You're going to probably want to see the facilities and the studio and everything. So if you are or even if it's virtual and you and they're doing, you know, so if you have an opportunity to connect um, over, you know, over Zoom or over, uh, you know, even over the phone, it's hard to do that over the phone. But I think, you know, either way, trying to really, um, you know, to get them to take a, a quick look or even talk about what they might be expecting in a portfolio. I think that will really, really help. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think the last thing I would say, too, is for parents out there or students, too, who are sort of thinking, well, I love art. I'd love to study art. What am I going to do with it when I graduate? Another thing that you could do is talk to them about, you know, where do students go on from here? What, where are they working? What companies hire them? What kinds of jobs are they doing? So that you can wrap your brain around what the opportunities will be and if those sound like interesting ones to you. Yeah. And I think also even art specific art schools that may not necessarily have, you may think, oh, well, I, I want to study business or get an, a handle on that. Um, you know, a lot of art schools, that's part of their curriculum too. Yeah. They're really helping students. You know, they know that you can't just, they're not just going to let you out 
in the world with an, with you know some amazing art and some amazing talent with not you know without the practical skills so um, right. i have a student at savannah called up jim martin design and she um you know was doing product design and yeah took a quite a, a number of marketing and and you know classes that really helped her from the business side of, of things too so right right yeah. which so something to look for when you're looking at these programs is what are they combining with the art that will help you be prepared like you say to to go out into the world ready to do this for a living rather than something you're going to just do in a studio. So, Julia, thank you so much for joining today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. We are going to take a short break. And when we come back, we are talking about the supplements for Wake Forest. So don't go away.